Okay, this is an audiovisual study guide for chapter four of Dana Harris's Introduction to Biblical Greek Grammar. So at the end of chapter four, Harris lists uh, concepts and skills you need to know in order to master the chapter. We're going to take that list and reverse engineer it and provide the notes from the textbook for those concepts. Uh, this is meant to be a review. If you come across something in this audiovisual study guide that you do not know or you don't understand, you need to go back to the chapter uh, and read it and take a look at examples. So the concept of slot and filler for understanding noun functions. So slots are various functions within a sentence and fillers are particular parts of speech or constructions that could uh, fit into those slots. So for the function slot subject, you need a noun or a word that functions as a noun a substantive as a filler. The same is true for the direct object and indirect object functions or slots. Basic function of each of the Greek noun cases. Nominative case indicates the subject of a verb. Accusative case indicates the direct object of a verb. Dative case indica indicates the indirect object of a verb. And genitive case describes another noun. The distinction between neutral gender, natural gender, and grammatical gender. Natural gender refers to groups of words that correspond to males or females, such as king or queen. Greek also has nouns that reflect natural gender, but grammatical gender is a completely separate concept from natural gender. So aner is a noun that reflects natural gender, it means man, but the grammatical gender of a noun has, has nothing to do with natural gender. Concept of declension and noun stems. Declensions are patterns of inflections that occur with substantives. Nouns have three different patterns of declension based on whether the noun stem ends in certain vowels or a consonant. So you should know this from previous chapters as well. Noun case endings. Case endings are the endings that change with a declension pattern. So in the English word books, book would be the noun stem and S would be the case ending. This is of course just an example uh, from English to help illustrate. Substantive and modifier. A substantive is any word that functions as a noun. A modifier is any word that functions as an adjective or an adverb in the case of verb modifiers, but this chapter is about nouns. Predicate nominative. A nominative in the predicate position of the sentence and joined with an equative verb. So God is love. Love is a noun and a predicate nominative. It describes the subject. God is a noun and the subject. Love is a noun and the predicate nominative. Predicate adjective, an adjective in the predicate and nominative case with an equative verb. Students are faithful. Faithful would be a predicate adjective. Genitival modifier, a word in the genitive case that modifies a substantive. The Lord of glory, of glory would be a genitival modifier. Head noun, a substantive modified by a genitival modifier. So the Lord of glory, the Lord is the head noun because it's being modified by the genitival modifier of glory. First declension feminine nouns, uh, eta type, alpha type, alpha pure type, and alpha impure type. So eta type has an eta throughout the singular forms of the declension. Alpha pure type has an alpha through, through singular forms. The alpha impure type has an alpha in the nominative case, nominative and accusative singular forms, but shifts to an eta in the genitive and dative singular forms, hence impure because it mixes it up. Uh, most of these are feminine. Most of these nouns are going to be feminine and have stems ending in alpha or eta. And once you memorize the paradigms and you're, you're looking at the chart, this should make total sense. Fixed and inflected components for nouns, gender and declension are fixed components and they do not change. Case and number are inflected components and must change according to the context. Lexical form for nouns. The nominative singular is the lexical form for nouns, so logos. The lexical form often lists the genitive singular ending followed by the article. So a lot of times you'll have logos, who, and ta, uh, or ha. Parsing order for nouns. The parsing order for nouns is case, number, gender, lexical form, and a possible inflected meaning. All right, so the skills you need is, are to be able to parse first and second declension nouns and translate basic Koine sentences that also include present active and middle verbs. So that's what you need to do to be able to master this cha chapter. I recommend a parsing app for this, or you can find a parsing app website for free. The following noun paradigms must be memorized for this chapter. Logos, uha, technon, uta, hemera, as, a, doxa, es, a, agape, es, a, and prophetes, uha. So, uh, 
these are the lexical forms here. Uh, and I do have videos on how to memor use memory palaces to memorize these paradigms. You can also uh, learn them by rote, by writing them down, uh, or uh, by using a parsing app. Hope that's helpful. Comment with any questions or concerns.